FIFA's leadership have written to World Cup teams urging them to focus on football in Qatar and not morality issues. The letter is from FIFA's president Gianni Infantino and the governing body's secretary general Fatma Samora. It's been seen by Sky News and to discuss this further we're now joined by Sky News sports correspondent Rob Harris. Uh, Rob, good morning. Thanks for, for joining us this morning. And now, for, for years, this World Cup has been surrounded by conversations around the treatment of low-paid migrant workers and, and laws that criminalise same-sex relations. Does this letter seem like FIFA want to sweep all of that under the carpet? Yeah, it does indicate they hope this will be a World Cup without protest, but we've just seen the build-up in the last few weeks alone highlighting some of the issues we can expect to be highlighted by the teams. We had that statement from the English and Welsh FAs in September that did highlight their plans to call for the compensation fund for workers who suffered building the projects in Qatar. And of course, Qatar does say that they have improved working conditions, but there are still concerns about those people who have died there in the country. England and Wales also planning those One Love rainbow armbands to be worn by the captains to highlight the discriminatory laws, the anti-LGBTQ plus laws in Qatar. And this letter from Infantino and Samora does not directly address those calls to wear the armbands. The FA is still waiting for approval, but they say they'll go ahead anyway wearing them in Qatar. What this letter I've obtained has uh, highlighted, it does say in this letter that no one people or culture or nation is better than the other. And they talk about having respect for that diversity. And it's very much saying that they don't think the teams going to the World Cup should be handing out mor moral lessons to the rest of the world. And this is clearly the FIFA leadership trying to ask the teams to steer clear from some of those uh, campaigning messages that they plan to, uh, to use in Qatar under a lot of pressure from uh, external groups like Amnesty International. A lot of nations are still waiting for FIFA to respond to appeals to compensate families of those who died building the wider infrastructure. Do we expect anything to come from this? Well, we've been hearing from the Qatari government this week and they believe it's not a matter for football to get involved with. I was out in Doha a few weeks ago with the CEO of the World Cup, Nasser al Qatar, and he was telling the English and Welsh FAs to stick to football. Very much a message in this letter from uh, the FIFA chiefs to the 32 World Cup finalists. And Qatar does point to the progress it's made, progress it says sort of eclipses other countries in the region. And the issue is we don't know how many people have died building the wider World Cup infrastructure because Qatar doesn't carry out uh, full investigations into all the deaths. Qatar says there's only been three work-related deaths on the stadiums, but we know of many cases of men in their 20s, their 30s, dying uh, too young, uh, perhaps due to the working in the heat in Qatar. And the conditions do get very hot, particularly in the summer, up to 40 degrees. It's why this World Cup is not being held in June and July. It will be in November, December. And it is cooler then just to uh, caution expectation. It should be under 30 degrees for a lot of the time there. But this is a World Cup that you know, FIFA hope will be focused on the football. But as we've seen also in the last week or so, the Australia team producing that video where they directly speak to the camera, asking for better uh, conditions for the migrant workers and calling out the, uh, the illegality of same-sex relations in Qatar. And this is clearly going to be an issue that we're still talking about in the build-up with, what, two weeks away until kickoff in Doha? Well, in regards to those... Um rules and, and laws that Qatar has around same-sex relations in that letter. Infantino and Samora also try to sort of ease travelling fans' concerns, particularly those who identify as LGBTQ+. Um, I know, like you say, you've been out in Qatar recently, and, and that what's being said in the letter is perhaps more of a commitment that's currently been made by the hosts. Will the fans be feeling any better after that? There are some concerns from fan groups about going there. I've heard from the LGBTQ plus groups in England and Wales, and some fans are deterred from travelling to Qatar because same-sex relations are criminalised. Now, Qatar tries to claim that they aren't necessarily enforced, but the laws still exist. So while this letter does say from Infantino and Samora that everyone will be welcome in Qatar, regardless of origin, background, religion, gender, sexual orientation and nationality. 
those assurances aren't enough for fans who believe actually a tournament shouldn't be held in a country where same-sex relations are criminalised. And yet, Nasser al Qatar, the World Cup CEO, when I was with him in Doha a few weeks ago, did say that gay fans would be welcome. He also said rainbow flags would be welcome if the fans wanted to bring them into the stadiums. But uh, this has been an issue that has been creating a lot of concern in the build-up to the World Cup. And actually, it's also caused FIFA to change how it awards tournaments in future. So actually, this is one of the areas that future hosts are assessed for in terms of their uh, LGBTQ plus legislation and the fact how open they are and how lack of discriminatory they are towards fans and, and, and players and officials who are coming uh, to the country.